take time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty Father, I am so happy for your liberating power that is available to liberate everyone here from the power of the devil, Amen. from the power of sin, Amen. from the power of the world. And whatever power is contending with their souls. I thank you because your salvation has come already. We are blessed. You are here already. We honor you. We honor the Father. We honor Jesus the Son. We honor the Holy Ghost. Glory to your name in Jesus name. Thank you Lord Divine. Happy to be in your presence and to minister in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. I'm taking the message, you are limited by your insufficient knowledge of truth. You are limited. Limited means... You, you cannot go too far. You have not gone too far. You have not gone far. You cannot do too much. You are not doing too much. Or so much rather. You are not doing so much. You are not seeing much. Why? Because of your limited... Because of the little knowledge you have. It means you know too small. And that's why you are not making much progress. You are not too small. That is why you are not effective. You are not too small. That is why you still suffer defeat. In fact, you are ashamed now because you are not too small. What you know is so small. That is why you face shame. If you know and know and understand... The full thing, you will do much. You will see much. If you see fully what the things really are, you will be different. But because you have seen just very small, that's why you cannot do much. We can't rely on you so much because the knowledge you have is small. The understanding you have is small. Your faith is limited by your knowledge. When a man saw Jesus and said, My servant is at home, tormented. I want you to heal him. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The man knew so much. He understood Jesus. What it, who he was talking with, he knew him. 
the authority of Jesus in the universe. He knew it. He understood and said, Lord, I am a man under authority. I have some soldiers under me that I command. I say to this one, go. He goes. To the other, come. He comes. And to the one, do this. He does it. Lord, I know your power. I know your authority. I know your person, the creator of the universe. Speak the word only. My servant shall be healed. Jesus' mother. Wonderful. This is great faith. I have not found this type of faith in Israel. It's because the people are doubting. The people are doubting me, my personality and authority. I have not found this type of faith. No, not in Israel. I pray that today the Lord will quicken your knowledge. You will know. I say, you will know that you have known. Amen. And by knowledge, you shall justify many. Amen. By knowledge, you shall do exploit in this life. Amen. For they that know their God shall be strong. So, now look at it. I talk about the knowledge of truth. You are limited in life. It's like a sick man. He is in his sickness because he has not known that there are drugs to cure him. He does not know. As a result, he is limited in life. There are many things he cannot do because of his situation. He has not known. Oh, that someone would know. Someone would tell him that he would come to the region of knowledge and acquire the right knowledge. You won't see him in his sickness anymore. And you will see him doing that which he could not do. So that's what we say in the book of John. John chapter 8. We want to read verse 32. The Bible tells us here saying, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Can you say it? And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Say it three times. The third one. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What about if you don't know the truth? You will be in bondage. You will be in fear. You will be in captivity. You will be defeated. You will not make progress in life. Why? You don't know the truth. Let me tell you the value of the truth. Or the value of knowledge. In Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 29. Verse 12. To verse 14. Isaiah 29. Verse 12 to 14. Therefore, behold. I will. My verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this book I pray thee and he said I am not learned can you see here is a treasure of information that will make him better but ignorance has taken captive of him here he could read from a book and get relevant information. Relevant information that will transform his life, will make him achieve what he would what he desired in life, but because he can he cannot read the book. 
He cannot read the book. He cannot have access to that. I am saying, there are some things you have no access to. And it is hurtful to your life. There are things you have no access to. And those things will affect your life. But I want to carry you from where you are. And bring you to knowledge. So that you can know those things that are relevant in your life. But to another person, the book was given, verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the weights of a book. That is sealed. Which means deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. Here is very painful, my brethren, that many intelligent men, many educated men, don't know about God because the word of God is sealed. With all their position in the society, with all their learning, professors of learning, they cannot attend to the actual knowledge of salvation, knowledge of the truth, knowledge of God's word, because the word itself is sealed. They cannot open it. It means with all their education, they, they don't come to Bible. They don't come to the Word of God. They don't come to where life actually matters. They don't go, and it's a pitiful thing. See how great your husband is. But he is, the Word of God is sealed to him. Mighty in the office, Mighty in the society, a lecturer, a professor, a great man, respected in the society, but the book of God is sealed. What knowledge will he get? He has not known anything about God, anything about heaven, anything about Satan, anything about hellfire, anything about heaven, anything about uh, how to be free from sin he has no knowledge this essential knowledge is sealed pitiful very pitiful you see them in their religions mighty men great men they are following the bush path they are being they, they are being drowned in the water, in the waters of this life. Why? The knowledge of the essential is sealed. It's also painful for people who are in churches. But the knowledge of these things are sealed. Or whatever they are telling them there is not sufficient for them to benefit from the truth. Two things. One, sealed knowledge. They cannot have access to the true knowledge of salvation, of life. To give them the blessings of life. Number two, ignorance. They have not taught insufficient information. They congregate in churches, but the information given to them is insufficient. They have not gotten knowledge to the point of usefulness to the point of salvation they have not gotten that understanding I cannot read for I am an illiterate and that is why Christianity is affected in their lives many want to serve God it's only the information they have about God is too small to be meaningful is too small. Look at it. Insufficient knowledge of God. They are in church. But what they tell them about God is too small. What they tell them 
about God is too small to be meaningful in their lives. Too small. Look at it in the book of Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 and 24. The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory Glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. This is essential knowledge about God. He says, Know me in these three areas. That I am the Lord. That is full of love. I am the Lord. That is full of love. As a mother, you express love towards your children. God says, that little fragment came from came from him. They fetch love from the ocean of God and made you uh, and gave it to you. You are now using a spoon to give it to your children. He is the ocean of love. Know me in this way. If you know me in this way. Your life will not be the same. If you know that I love you. If you will know that I care for you. If you will know that I am interested in you. That I created you as an object of love. Someone I will be seeing and loving every day. If you knew this, you would have come to God for a long time. All these sufferings of your life, all these, these confusions of your life, shouldn't have been. You would have known that you have a lover. One that loves you, that is interested in you. He is more than a father to you. He is more than a mother to you. God is more than a brother to you. He is more than a sister to you. God is more than a husband to your life. He is more than a friend. The love all these ones gather can bring them together. Can never equal the love God has for you. Can you now see it? If this is the case, why are you suffering outside God? Why? Are you suffering what you are suffering now? Outside God. Why have you not come to this lover? I am saying you knew too small. You knew too small. You knew too small. That is why you are the way you are. Let your knowledge of God increase. Let your understanding Come to the real sense. I'm telling you, you will start living your fullness as God desires it. But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness. I am the Lord, that is, I am the God. That wants things 
that exercise loving kindness and judgment. That word judgment that talks about truth, justice. I am God that wants things to be done in the right way. I am God that wants things to be done in the right way. Why? I frown at evil. However much I love you, if you turn to evil, I will judge you. I will judge you. So, no God like this. This one is important for those who are playing with God. Who feel God so much loves them. So, they are careless. Careless the way they speak. Careless the action they take. They even go to immorality. Go to sin. Because to them, it's me. God loves me. Ha, God, see, I'm, God has loved me. God has loved me. They don't know that he is a God of judgment. That wants things to be done in the right way. That wants things to be done in truth. That's God. If you turn away from truth, you have turned away from God. Now, you are not living in the truth of God. In the way that God will approve, it means you have no God in your life. These are things you need to know so that you don't play with it. Again, I am the Lord that exercise righteousness in the earth. Right living. Good living. Holy living. That's God. God wants righteous living holy living he wants you to live without committing sin that is God many people are serving in churches they are not aware of this Be because their knowledge of God is too small they are not serious Christians in the sight of God they do things, they transgress without even knowing. Because what they know about God is too small. He is the God of righteousness. As loving as he was, loving Lucifer in heaven, beautified Lucifer. When iniquity was found in Lucifer, he pushed him out from heaven. So the same thing with you as loving, as caring, as this God is, if sin is found in you, he will take you out. Adam and Eve enjoyed him in the garden. But when iniquity came, they accepted sin. Did God allow them there? You need to know. Otherwise, you will say, I'm giving my life to, I've given my life to Jesus. I'm born again. You will not be in Christ. By the, the time you go back to sin, you are no longer in Christ. What you are doing, you are playing religion. The real spirit of religion is not in you again. Why? You have gone to sin. You have gone to evil. What you speak out of your mouth is wickedness. What you do to your fellow ones is evil in the sight of God. So that spirit has gone. Samson never knew. He didn't, he didn't know that he could not take God to hallows, to, to, to meet with hallows. He didn't know that. As he was doing those things, the power of God left him. The spirit of God left him. Many of these pastors that are pastoring, God is not with them. God is not with them. That's one thing you need to know. Look at it in the book of 2 John. God is serious about this. Very serious. But if you don't know God well, you will never benefit. 
you will never be able to keep yourself in his way. No, you will not be able to. Take John, please. Take John. Take John. The Bible tells us this. We take note of that. Hold it fast. Yes. Okay, it's Second John verse, verse 9. Second John verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had bought the Father and the Son. The peace, whoever, whosoever, man or woman, adult or child, a pastor or elder, or just a member, that does not practice the word of God, God is not in him. That's simple. God is not in him. Whatever he does, whatever he says, in the church, anywhere, God is not in him. He goes about in evangelism, but God is not in him. Why? He is not practicing the word of God. He's a sinner. He's a sinner. So, you shall know the truth. Then, you will now know how to bring yourself to God. How to keep yourself in Christ. In God. Knowledge of God. Get the sufficient knowledge of God to enjoy God. You will do exploits. Your faith will grow. You will know how to pray. And pray with confidence. Because you know Him. You are following Him. You are keeping his ways. You are serving the Lord. You are holding to his truth. Again, your knowledge of Satan, of Satan is not enough. The knowledge many people have of Satan is insufficient. They don't know him well. And because they don't know him well, they stay with him. They submit to him. They play friendship with him. They make friends with the children of Satan. They marry the children of Satan. All because they don't know this Satan well. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You need to know about Satan. Know him well. Know Satan well. Then you will do everything to keep away from him. To overcome him in your life because you have known Satan. The Bible tells us about Satan in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 28 verse 12 Ezekiel 28 verse 12 The Bible says Son of man take up a lamentation Take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him Thou seest the Lord God. Thou sealest up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Satan, called Lucifer, was, was the perfection of the creation of God in beauty. The wisest person, wisest creature that God met. At that time he was called Lucifer. Son of the morning. An angel. A covering cherub. 
Thou hast been Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the ep- the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablet, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou was created. Every precious stone, the beauty of the beauty in all creation of God, Satan was taken to beautify Satan. I was given a place of leadership, the highest place of leadership, and given liberty. Amen. Giving liberty to serve God freely among the angels who also admired his beauty. Thou art the anointing cherub, a cherub that covered and I have said this so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. The reason why iniquity came to Satan was sin. And the explanation of that iniquity was given. What the Lord is saying, when I met you, I didn't put sin in your life. So, it's not that I am responsible for the sin that came into your life. No. When I met you, I didn't put sin into your life. Just as when I met Adam, I didn't put sin into Adam. It is the same way. He said, you were perfect. You were perfect. From the day that I created you until iniquity was found in you. Well, it might be like this. When God first made the angels, He gave them free will. Just as He created the human beings and gave us free will. But I After the rapture and the resurrection, there shall be no iniquity anymore. The will to sin will be taken away. So man will not have any will to sin. Now we are in probationary period. God just wants to know who will go with me for everlasting time, everlasting life. So I give you your free will to choose. It appears that was what was done with the angels at the first. After their creation. But he made them perfect. What caused Satan to go into evil? Adam was tempted by Satan. That is why God shot Adam mercy. But for Satan, and for Satan, who tempted him? He, he sin came out by himself in Satan. It didn't start from anywhere. Look at it. It continues. It says, verse 17, verse 16, By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. What caused the sin of Satan? Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. 
Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before the kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Amen. Sin came to Satan because he started looking to his beauty. He started using his wisdom. As he looked to his beauty, he became proud. And started thinking he was as great as God. As, because angels admired him. So, he started thinking he was as great as God. And by then, started politicizing the other angels with different kinds of approach of sin. Every kind of method was used over these people who also at that time had their own free will to decide to believe Satan or not to believe Satan. And of course, such angelic free will no more exists because the angels in heaven now walk without uh, pass, without that free will anymore. All they work like machines. None will commit sin in heaven. No. They do the beatings of the Father. All their hearts are given over to God as we can deduce from the scriptures. All their hearts. There is no possibility of another Satan. It was a probationary period which has ended. Like after the, uh, after the rapture when we have gone to the, to the resurrections we would have gone to heaven after the uh, first resurrection when we shall have met with our master met, entered into eternity there shall be no sin again in man neither possibility of sinning neither shall there be any temptation on our way all disobedience would have been put out both the one of heaven and the one of earth should have been put out. And the rest, as the angels are living in heaven with him forever, we shall join up and live together forever and ever and ever and ever. Now, the matter now is, Satan has fallen from heaven. When he fell, his target was man still have the free will he had that the angels had in heaven before they, they, they had been cast out of heaven. With this, he would still want to persuade man away from God as he persuaded one third of the angels. Out of, out of every, uh, out of every three angels, one submitted to Satan. Only two stayed with God. Out of three thousand angels, one thousand followed Satan. Out of three million angels, one million followed Satan. Now, if you know this. They have left heaven. You are following Satan today. is because you don't know it. You don't really have enough knowledge. Your knowledge of Satan is too small. That is why you are still following him. By allowing him to take you to alcohol. To take you to immorality. To come to you and carry you for witchcraft. To make you go and steal is because you don't know. My people, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Because you don't know who Satan is, you are following him. 
he provokes you you say i will fight you don't understand that he made it is by that way he made one third of the angels 33 percent at least 33 percent of the angels fall i mean fell from heaven along with him and the lord has decreed him here decreed about him that he is going he will be burned with fire because of satan and his angels the hellfire was created hellfire was created because of satan and his angels now you are still allowing satan this evil being you are allowing him you are going to collect charm said which is they give you something representing demons in your life you still collect charm your knowledge is too small about satan you are still saying that oh, charm will help me eh hey, you are going to these people charm against witchcraft so that you if there's accident you will escape accident if they poison you poison will not hurt you you are, about. You are burying charm in your house those things are from satan they are to carry you away already he has carried you already he has carried you i'm telling you it's because your knowledge of satan is so small you you think that satan can help you help you maybe angels thought like that if he deceived them he the wisdom of satan is so high only god can overcome the wisdom of satan because he's the, he is the source of wisdom you don't know this and you play into satan i will still eat with satan but i will be using long spoon do you really know the wisdom of satan how that long spoon will become a short spoon satan knows how to do it the wisdom of satan you are managed you say i know how to play sin i i know i will, i am a born again woman i will play i know how to play that man he won't i won't release my body to him that is satan at work as for god by that thought you are already a defiled person god said you have defiled your sanctuary the place your body is the temple of god to worship god now satan by this your pride you cannot worship me anymore your body has become dirty it's not that somebody tempted you it came by yourself you these angels i gave you probationary period you willingly yielded with satan and you are already spirits you are not in the body it's only flesh and blood that heart mess that has mercy people who are living in flesh and blood spirits don't have mercy anymore once they have fallen from grace baba because there's no way again they had access to god they have seen everything about god they knew everything but chose to turn off there's no more salvation for them it's only for human being in flesh now satan carried you satan is dealing with you now he's coming to you in the night and committing immorality with you in the dream and you wake up and you are laughing hey this night i met with someone i met with someone hey this night you're laughing instead of crying that satan instead of crying i said satan has come is trying to get at me to pollute my life oh god deliver me from him you are rather rejoicing that you committed immorality committed sin or immorality or rather you that someone slept with you although i have always said if so if you dream such dream it is satan walking the actual thing has not yet happened he is eating you to the actual thing and you should not be pl having pleasure in it you should be resisting it you should be rebuking it 
You should be seeking salvation from it. Satan is still sending you to go and fight somebody. To go and do evil to somebody. To go and poison somebody. And you are listening to him. You don't, your knowledge is small. Your knowledge of Satan is small. Jesus says, Satan is a thief. Satan is a thief. Will you want to bring a thief to your house? If you have money, will you want to show the thief where the money is? But why are you relaxing to the hand of Satan? Bringing him to your house. Bringing Satan into your house. Causing the people of Satan to come and drink alcohol right in your room. Bringing harlots, children of the devil, into your house. This pornographic video, putting it in your house. Wow! You don't know. That's why it's like that. Yes. Your insufficient knowledge of Satan makes you to dance into his hand. Your insufficient knowledge of Satan is making you to dance into his hand. You have, you are undermining Satan's wisdom. Satan is planning to come to you and destroy you. You are, you are laughing. You are laughing. It's because you don't know. Before you know it, you are gone. Instead of crying to God, seeking God's salvation, help me Lord. He is coming. He is coming. God, rise up for me. You are laughing. You have not known who that person is. But today, know him. He's a wicked person. He has no place in heaven. His dwelling place is hellfire. He is a thief. His aim is to destroy you. His aim is to scatter you. Render you useless in this life. He is using people to scatter you. Using people to destroy your life. He is the one raising up these false preachers. These false pastors. To confuse you so that you will not know the truth. So that you will not be saved and die in hell. He is the one doing it. He is the one. That when the Lord wants to let you know the truth, you are shouting, hey, hey, you are defending Satan. It's because you don't know him. That's why you are defending Satan. Again, your knowledge of hellfire is too small. <laughs> that committed that evil thing and are planning to commit the, it the second time. Your knowledge of hellfire is too small. You have not understood what it means by hellfire. Satan understands it. But you don't. Some of us have understood it. That's why you see, we keep away from sin. We keep away. We better take shame than to hide sin. We will be, we'd rather be ashamed in this life. We'd rather be naked than to hide iniquity. Why? We know hell. It's not a good place. Hell? Hell? The punishment God has for man. Cain, even on earth, as when God put curse on Cain, He said, my punishment is too much for me. The punishment of hellfire is more than the sin you have committed. Just imagine a child stole the smallest denomination of money. Maybe 50 kobo. Now, a child stole that and they take the child for a everlasting prison. He would Grow up and die in the prison for fifty kobo. Say, ah, huh? Which that? Just fifty kobo. That is how the judgment of God is. For just a lie, the judgment is more than just that lie. One lie, not even two, not even ten. The judgment is to be inside fire forever. The judgment for just 
telling one lie. The judgment, the judgment for sleeping with a woman that is not your wife. Hmm. That thing you did just for a little moment, maybe ten minutes, the judgment of that thing is to be inside fire and be tortured forever. God will forget you. No human being will even remember you. You will be there forever and ever. Hellfire is not a small place. It's because you don't know it. That's why you are still keeping malice with people. You are still doing evil. Showing pride. Showing wickedness. Still practicing witchcraft. It's because you don't know hell. In Mark. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9 verse 43. The Bible tells us here saying Mark 9 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life men than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where their womb dieth not and the fire is not quenched God is the one saying I know what I made called hell fire I know it listen it's better you lose your eye it's better you lose any member of your body. Suffer anything they can, that can be suffered. Hunger, nakedness, imprisonment, whatever you need to suffer on earth, go for it rather than hell. Go for it. Suffer shame. Go and suffer it. Confess and suffer. Let the whole world know that you are a wizard. Uh, here, oh, so you are a wizard? Hey, come and see the face of a wizard. Let them come and see your face. It's better than that you enter here. Where the fire is not quenched. Forever and ever you are forgotten. And the wounds will be pouring, bowing hole through you. Consuming you. Tearing you into, piece, into pieces. You have not known hell. That's why you are still keeping boyfriend. That's why a man will say, come and meet me here, you are coming. It's because you have not understood hell. Your knowledge of hellfire is too small. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In the same way, the knowledge of Jesus. Your knowledge of Jesus, who he is, is too small. Your knowledge of Jesus is just too small. That's why up to this time you have not come to him. That is why up to this time you have not surrendered to him. Your knowledge of Jesus is too small. Look, listen to what Jesus told a woman in John chapter 4. John chapter 4 verse 10. John Chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Can you see? Jesus was telling this woman he was discussing with. He said, if you know the person standing by you, if you know the person talking to you, the power he has, the grace he has, the ability he has, the wisdom, the authority, if you know that this is your creator standing, that has a everlasting love for your life, and has 
come because of Satan in your life, you would have come to Jesus since. And has the power to chisel sin out of your life. Has the power to clean your name from, the, from hell. And transfer you to heaven. If you knew this person called Jesus. You would have been in him since. You would have, you would have never backslidden from him. That they brought you to Christ. You came and turned away again. It's because you don't know him. Is because you don't know him. What? Why you have been going to church and still in your sin? What you, they tell you about Jesus? There is too small. They have not brought out Jesus properly in the way he should be understood. That is why you are still a sinner. That is why you have not been saved. But know Jesus. Things will be different if you know Jesus. If you, if you will know that He is the Creator God, because God says, "Let us make man," showing that God is three persons in one, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is that name. God is of, is the name three persons bear: the Father, the Son. The Holy Spirit. The Father is God. Jesus, who is the Son, is God. Holy Spirit is God. Why is Jesus called the Son? Because He came, he came to, a, to this world. And everybody in this world is the Son of somebody. So, as He became a man, He assumed that to Son. In heaven, is not Son. He's God. Angels don't call Him Son in heaven. He's God. When Thomas discovered him. He said, Thomas, you said you want to touch the wound of my hand and of my side. Here is my hand. Come and touch it. And come and touch my side. where That was pierced with, with sword. What did Thomas say? My Lord and my God. He has understood. The disciples knew him. The disciples knew him. When he asked, what do men say I am? They said, they, everybody has his own. Some say you're John the Baptist. That's why they behave towards Jesus that way. They didn't have the correct knowledge of Jesus. I am saying you don't have. That is why you are the way you are. Still a sinner. You have not got. You have not gotten the correct knowledge of Jesus. That is why you are a Muslim up to now. That is why you are an idol worshiper. Up to this time, if you will know that Jesus is the creator of Muslims in all the world, and that Jesus is the creator of the mountains, and the waters, and the sun, and the angels, and Satan, you would have abandoned those fake things and turned to Jesus. It's because you don't know it. You don't know. That's why you even abuse him. You don't know. You abuse him without knowing. That's it. But what do you, my disciples, say I am? You are the Christ. The son of the living God. The Christ. The one God promised to come to the world. You are the son. The second person in the Godhead. Who is like the father. The same thing with the father. One with the father. United with the father. The everlasting Jehovah. You are the one. Jesus said, yes, that's the knowledge of salvation. That's the knowledge of salvation. If you will come to know that this Jesus is God, is Lord, is Savior, is your creator. If you come to know him in this way, your, your obedience to him will be absolute. You will obey him completely. You will submit to him completely. You will just do his command. They run swiftly for his command. They obey him with that great being. He created them. How much little are you? Who is man that you even came to visit him? Who is man that Lord creator, Jehovah eternal, would come to be like him on earth to visit him? Who is man? That's Jesus. If you know him, you will surrender. 
All you people who are thinking that if I surrender to Jesus, they will kill me. You will know Jesus is life. The people that talk about killing you have no power. All of them themselves have no power. The occultic realm have no power. Witches and wizards and their Satan and all those demons, whatever titles they give themselves there, have no power before Jesus. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Maybe, I don't know whether Sister Linda will have a chance to tell you that story tomorrow when she will be ministering to you. But in one of these places in Sierra Leone when she was ministering, a, 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 a witch, they call her queen of the coast, came there with the power to attack her. She sat at the back. She shoot, shot an arrow. The thing got, it, it missed. So she came to the center. The demon said, no, go to the front, go to the front. When she came to sit in the front to shoot, he saw Jesus standing by her. He said, eh, okay, this is his, okay, this is her power. This, okay, this person is power. If this is where the source of her power. I will shoot both Jesus and him, and her. Because she didn't know Jesus. She was right in the womb. She was initiated a witch. So she grew up in another world. She didn't know Jesus. All she knew was Satan. So her mind is, she was going to shoot Jesus now. Praise the Lord. So, as she was aiming, she saw that uh, Jesus disappeared from the pulpit and came to her back and just held her neck like this. Hey. In my neck. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, now she was calling for help from various places. Because it was like the whole world was upon her head. She cannot lift it up. She could not lift it up. She was calling for help. She was incanting, incanting for the superior queen to come. Don't call my name in that place. Huh? That one has passed our power. Power pass. Power pass. Jesus pass. Satan. Jesus passed Satan. Creator, how can you compare the age of a child with that of his father? Will you ever be asking a child, you and your father who is older, then ask the power of Jesus and that of Satan. Compare them. It's because you don't know. That's why you have come to Jesus. That is why I'm afraid thinking that if I come to Jesus now, witches and wizards will kill you. Have they killed us? Because the mighty one is with us. The great God is with us. Your knowledge of Jesus is too small. Know him well and submit to him today. Again, your knowledge of heaven is too small. That is why you have need, you are still thinking about uh, all you are looking for is the earth. You can tell every lie to get job and to get money. You can give your body because you want pleasure, you want money, you want to have pleasure. You go after women, you say you want pleasure. You don't know the pleasures of heaven. You don't know how heaven is. All you have heard about heaven is too small. That's why you're not, you're not convinced that it's the place Satan came from and is angry where he came from it and doesn't want any man to go there. That's why you're walking on you. Because it's envious. Excellent, beautiful, everlasting, comforting, wonderful. What can you tell about heaven? All you need is there. Revelation chapter 21. You don't know. That's why you're thinking, eh, I don't want to lose this thing. Eh, I, I, eh, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. Look at Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 21. Verse 1, rather. Verse 1 to verse 5. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
For the first heaven and the first earth were passed. That's talking about the atmospheric heaven. Were passed away and there was no more. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You don't know this prepared place called New Jerusalem, which we shall be there. You are not aware. You don't know. Precious things are coming. Precious, precious things are coming. So great that the Lord says, don't mind those killing you. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Yes. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these ways are true and faithful. Verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a test. Of the fountain of the water of life freely. Look at verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he shall be my people. Hallelujah. The beauty of heaven is for you. It's waiting for you. Nothing on earth can compare. The rich man saw Lazarus in paradise. Paradise. At that time, paradise was underneath the earth. All the people that died went underneath the earth. Hellfire itself is underneath the earth. But it was divided into two. The, uh, the uh, abode of the dead. Where the dead people went to. One side was called paradise. And that was also named after Abraham. Abraham's bosom. The other is the hellfire. Sinners went to hellfire. Righteous went to paradise. God gave the people in hell, the privilege to see their colleagues in heaven, I mean in paradise, so they could regret their folly in this world. Rich man, what did you benefit? Is it not more women? More money? More cars? Is it not to be governor and be president? Is it not to be a contractor? Or to be a professor in learning? What other things? Vanity. Vanity. Here is Lazarus in paradise. Now, paradise after the death of Christ has been taken to heaven. It's no more underneath the earth. It's now in heaven. Paul the apostle said, I am between two opinions. To die and be with Christ. Or to live and preach the gospel more. If I get out of the earth now, I'm going straight to Christ in heaven. What a place is waiting for you. You are still sinning, woman, selling your body to get money, to go to hell and miss heaven. This precious place, you want to miss heaven, you want to miss paradise, you want to miss the throne of God, God will wipe away your tears. All the comforts of life, you shall have it. All the beauties of life you shall have it. All the pains of life shall vanish. If you are blind, your eyes shall be perfect in heaven. If you are lame, your, your legs shall walk perfectly in heaven. There is no blemish, no ugliness in heaven. Everything is beautiful, freshness, glorious. If you see a person in heaven, if he comes down to the earth, you will think that it is God himself that came down. Because of the glory, because of the beauty, because of the magnificence, and all this you want to give away and go to hell is because you don't know heaven. Why? You are still allowing sin in your life. But today, sin will go. I say today, sin will go. A 
again. The last one now. Your, your knowledge of holiness revival movement is insufficient. That is why when you see us preach, you are saying, hey, they have come again. They have come, they have come to tell us lies. Uh, we have heard about them. We have heard that these people are not serious people. <laughs> Your knowledge of holiness revival movement is insufficient. I'm telling you the truth. That is why you are doing this. Listen to the book in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 16. I read verse 18. Let's, let's read from verse 17. Verse 15. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? In verse, in verse 13, When Jesus came into the course of, of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, I the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, but, uh, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen? Amen. These people knew Jesus. Convinced. God revealed Jesus to them. They were born again. Righteous people. They knew who Jesus was. And Jesus said, These are the type of people I will do my church upon. I will raise my church with people who have this faith, this conviction, this lifestyle. And I give unto you the keys of heaven, key of the kingdom of heaven, to open the door for people to enter in. To shut the door against wickedness and evil and Satan. That is holiness revival movement. We know Jesus. We know him. We know his name. We know his personality. We know his authority. We know that he is the son of the living God. We know that he is the savior of the world. God has caused this thing to be known clearly to our hearts. And therefore, we declare him to the world. And Jesus has given us authority to preach the gospel and lead people to heaven. I give you the keys of the kingdom. We have come with the key here now. If you believe our gospel, I'm telling you your life will change. If you submit to these things we're going to tell you, you will see the difference yourself. I say you will see the difference yourself. Just believe what we're saying. Don't follow what other people have said. Is it everybody that was speaking right of Jesus? There are people who say, better others who say he's John the Baptist, some say he's a demon. They have other things to say. But there are people that have correct things. To say, think of us as true men of God. As people with the, with the spirit of God. Holiness righteousness think of it think of us all when i say us i say us in court because judas was also among these people who also who are also saying something but he's different he's a thief he was a thief judas was among them but don't mind judas he's only one among among 12 the other 11 were sincere I said the other 11 were sincere. I said it so that you won't say, eh, I know one of their pastors, he, say, uh, he, he even came to sleep with me, I, am, I, 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 I overcame him. 
That's Judas. You hear me? That is Judas. But, I am sure of the eleven. They are right. They are righteous. And they have the keys of the kingdom to preach this gospel to you. And the holiness of other movement has been raising up in this end time. God has raised it up in this end time to bring people to Christ in mass and to the holiness of Christ so that they can make the rapture. We have come here for you. You can come to Jesus. Know the way of salvation. Very simple. Know the way, the path of salvation. Your knowledge of the path of salvation is too small. It's very simple. It does, it's not difficult as you're looking at it. Look at it in First John chapter 1. I read verse 7 to verse 9. First John chapter 1. Verse 7 to verse 9. It says, okay, let me start from, let me just quickly read from verse 1. Here's John chapter 1 verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father. And was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard. Declare we unto you. That ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. And with his son Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you. That your joy may be full. This then is the message. Which we have heard of him. And declare unto you. That God is light. And in him is no, is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, everybody are you there? Verse 9, are you there? Salvation is simple. One, two, go. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have brought Jesus to you now. Know Him. Run away from sin. Come to Him. Seek forgiveness of your sin. And yield your life to Jesus. God is ready to forgive you. He is ready to change you and give you the power to become a child of God. He will give you the power to be righteous. He will now lead you on the path of righteousness and holiness. Make you ready for heaven. Put your name in the book of life. Very simple. Are you ready for Jesus today? Rise up upon your feet. Into my heart into my heart come into my Into my heart. One happily. Rise up upon your feet. Amen. Amen. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me in your kingdom. 
Remember me. Remember me. Amen. Let us pray together. Just lay hand upon yourself. I want to commit you especially to God. My brethren, you can wait a little. Let's finish prayer. Almighty Jesus, we have exalted you. The eyes of many have been opened unto you. Manifest yourself here among your people. Bless your people. Whatever Satan has done in their lives, those that are under the bondage of Satan, we lose them tonight in Jesus' name. The ones carrying heavy load, I'm asking that the Lord be taken away from their heads in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, let your light shine upon everybody. Let freedom come. Let freedom come. Let darkness run away. Even as they are going home now, they are going in your power. They are going in your presence. Anything at home that is contrary shall run away from them in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, hear their prayers. Any oppression upon the body of any, upon the life of any, we bind the spirit of oppression. In Jesus' name. And I say receive your salvation. Receive your salvation. Receive your freedom. In the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. The peace of God be upon your heart. Tomorrow, the Lord will do greater things. In Jesus' name, we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved hallelujah Jesus I believe in you you are my
I believe in you. Believe you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I I believe, I believe you. 